Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Polyester here, and yesterday Dead by Daylight tweeted out a link to the official website which contained the lore of the next killer, or should I say killers, for chapter 18, A Binding of Kin, DLC. So, uh, the tweet here says, Both hunted from birth, Charlotte would eviscerate anyone who set foot near her brother Victor. And when you click on the link, it takes you to the official Dead by Daylight website, where they have this article of the twins lore. So we're gonna read along here together. A pair of conjoined twins, Charlotte and Victor Deshaies, formed an emotional bond like none other. Oh, and uh, some people don't think that uh, they can be conjoined twins because they are of different sexes, male and female. Actually, while it is more rare, fraternal twins can definitely be conjoined twins. That's something that's referred to as a chimera. Anyway. The unlikeliness, the unlikeliness of their successful birth in the 17th century could be described as miraculous, yet it immediately brought about their life of persecution. The twins emerged with Victor's lower body affixed into the chest of his sister, legs twisted around her muscles and organs. He was smaller than Charlotte, grown as if he were an appendage of her body rather than a fully formed boy. As the newborns screeched, so too did the midwife who delivered them, running from the home yelling of a demon birthed by a witch. So began the hunting of Charlotte, Victor, and their mother, Madeline. The coming years were fleeting memories for the twins, yet they were the closest thing to a normal life they would know. The journey with their mother was what they believed all children underwent. The games of running and hiding through France's countryside being an ordinary occurrence. At the age of five, a new game, a new challenge to the game was presented as their mother fell ill. Pale and exhausted, Madeline had no choice but to pass responsibility of collecting food onto Charlotte. The girl, burdened under extra clothing that concealed Victor's protruding body, set out from their forest tent and marched to a near, the nearby town. Though a peculiar sight, she did what she had been trained for, waiting for an opening at the market and swiping whatever food she could. It was a victory in the game, but one short-lived. After midnight, glowing flames surrounded the family's encampment, bobbing through the darkness. A single commanding shout broke the night silence and a mob of witch hunters streamed in. Grubby hands tore the twins from their bed, Charlotte frantically kicking all who approached. Madeline cried for her children, her voice abruptly silenced by a club to her skull. Victor shrieked the wailings of a trapped rat. The hunters coordinated quickly. A judge on hand declared Madeline guilty of witchcraft, evidenced by her demon spawn. Within minutes, they shackled her unconscious body to a tree, surrounding her feet with dry twigs and moss. As she awoke, she did not struggle, only begged her children to turn away. They would be given no choice. The twins were forced to watch as the torch was lit, and they watched as flames leapt up their mother's skirt, charring and sizzling her flesh. They watched as fat dripped from her body, and her face bubbled and twisted. They watched until the screams that tore her vocal cords were no more, and all that was left was the crackling of embers and a nauseating stench. Whatever joy and goodness were in them died with their mother. Caged and transported to an old wooden temple, they were sold to a secretive group clad in dark cloaks. Victor reacted with the ferocity of a rabid beast at any who approached clawing and biting. The only solace that could calm him was the embrace of his sister. Charlotte, bitter and hateful to all but her brother, found purpose in being his protector. Within the temple, they were exposed to unusual experiments for years, some cruel, many simply baffling. One day they would be made to break the neck of a small gray bird. The next they would bleed their fingers into a vase of roses. Every seventh day, they would sleep with the branch of a damp oak beneath their pillow. Then there was the chanting, a never-ending chorus from cloaked figures on scheduled intervals. In time, a final experiment was planned. Two robed figures herded the twins to the center of the temple, holding Charlotte upon an altar in a room lit with candelabras. The wrinkled face of a man peered from under his hood, placing a hand on the forehead of each twin, making careful examination of their skulls. 
Memento Mori, he uttered as he withdrew a shining blade. Charlotte rolled to her side, shifting her brother off the altar, and with a screech, he stretched his arm as far as he could, knocking a candelabra to the ground. The flames took to the dry wood immediately. They swept over the floor, igniting the black robes that brushed against it. Screams of agony pierced the chaos, invigorating Charlotte. She dashed through the inferno, vision concealed, with nothing but black smoke and blazing flame. A painful heaviness filled her lungs. No exit could be found, every step leading to overwhelming heat. She fell to her knees, suffocating, and then saw it. Sunlight, trees. She stumbled from the fire into the dewy grass. Without looking back, she ran into the forest until she collapsed. When Charlotte opened her eyes, she reached for Victor's hand. He made no attempt to budge. His body hung helplessly from her torso. She clasped his face, stared into his sad, still eyes. The movements she was accustomed to, his body pulling at her skin, his legs prodding at the cavity in her chest, were no more. Victor was dead. Charlotte had no choice but to continue moving as she mourned, fearing black cloaks and witch hunters were prowling. She concealed her brother's corpse under her clothing and marched for the sewers of a nearby city. There, she set up camp, emerging often to steal whatever food she could, resorting to raiding barns for pig slop when desperation set in. Throughout the years, Victor's corpse rotted as his limbs oozed and blackened. Yet his body demonstrated resistance to complete decomposition, as if his sister's blood still coursed through him. Protecting his lifeless body became Charlotte's sole reason for being, refusing to ever be separated from the one family she had left. Life in her teenage years was a game of survival. Her hatred for humanity grew each day under the realization they would never leave her be. No matter how many died during her botched robberies and desperate attempts to escape, there would always be more to pursue and sling words of condemnation at her. Monster. Demon. Witch. And it was the Black Cloaks who were the worst of them. Their hunt for her was unending, forcing her to constantly abandon shelter and run. For years, Charlotte fled, drawing blood out of necessity, cradling her long-dead brother in the night. During a frigid winter, her body began to break down. Food was scarce, and the refuge of the rickety shacks were no use against freezing temperatures. Sickle in hand, she sheltered near her campfire in the woods, not knowing if the black cloaks would take her before the cold did. As frost crystallized around her nostrils and her lips took on a gentle blue hue, Charlotte felt something she had never experienced. Acceptance. She closed her eyes, opening herself to the serenity of death, when a shriek, shrill and vicious, pierced her ears. Victor spasmed and flailed from her chest, a cloud of fog encompassing him. Before she could react, he spilled from her in a bloody puddle, landing on the snow and running. Pulling herself from the edge of death, she gave chase. Calling his name, she ran through the forest until her legs could hardly carry her, until finally, within her view was Victor, sitting at the edge of a thick fog. His face twisted and feral, screamed as a dark hooded figure emerged from the fog, grabbing his arm, and seized him. The serenity that had crept into Charlotte was extinguished, replaced with the seething hatred and rage she had depended on for so long. With a tight grip of her sickle, she charged into the fog, prepared to eviscerate any who set foot near her brother. See you in the fog, the Dead by Daylight team. So this is a very interesting uh, origin story. A lot of the uh, the killers have really terrible family lives and in that they aren't accepted or they're hurt by their loved ones. With this one, we see that their mother is accepting of them and uh it's actually society who has demonized them for their differences so uh yeah this is a pretty interesting chapter for sure so we we see that they have this black cloak society the dark cloaks that we see in elodie's lore are also here so it's a secret society that seem to perform sacrifices to the old one um and it's interesting to wonder who this is who's in the fog who's pulling victor in 
and getting Charlotte to follow. So perhaps that could be a future killer. Not entirely sure. But uh, it is interesting to wonder just who this person is who is laying hands on Victor here. Definitely has, has to have some uh, connection to that secret society, right? So that's all I have for you today. I'm going to put a link in here to LOD's lore if you haven't read through that yet. Also, the devs put out an update today on things that they're going to change once the chapter goes live um, compared to the way things worked in the PTB for the mechanics of the twins and changes to a couple of the perks for LOD and the twins. So look at my other videos if you want to see about those changes. And people are going to ask me, I know in the comments already, when is this chapter dropping? There hasn't been any official release date. Uh, we always have chapters come out on a Tuesday. I don't know that it's going to come out this Tuesday. It's a possibility, but I think it's more likely that we're going to be into December, which I believe is December the 1st. But again, there has been no official word by behavior when these, this chapter is going to be released. But people believe that the most likely date will be December the 1st. Okay, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other in and out of the fog, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.